If you love history and anthropology like me, Israel is a non-stop exploration of the ancient places and people. If you grew up reading Bible stories like my kids, it's a place where your Bible comes to life in a way that will stay with you forever. And if you know where to go, it's never boring. Hot, but not boring. So let's dig into the archeology span of Christian and Jewish sites, splash into the modern city of Tel Aviv, and go have some fun with my three, five, and nine-year-old as we zigzag across the Holy Land on our week-long vacation in August of 2023. It's Laura from November of 2023. I just want to take a minute and acknowledge the conflict that's happening in Israel and Gaza and just pray for peace for the folks that live there and that things will be better soon. That said, this series has done what we can to uplift to shine a light on those people who were super kind to us while we were in Israel, to share some of those small businesses that you could be supporting. In today's video, I wanna to talk to the tourists. I know that sounds silly, but if you were planning a trip to Israel, if you wanted to make an Aliyah, if you're Christian or Catholic and were looking to make a pilgrimage trip, tourism is so important to Israel and their economy, and right now, it's all at a standstill. And I know the thought of visiting Israel suddenly seems a little shaky. But I hope this video will give you a little virtual glimpse of what being there is like. And when the time comes and the country opens up again to international tourism, go, please, I encourage you. This trip will change your life. So for you tourists, this one's for you. Axon, where are we going? Our first day in Israel, we drove north to the Sea of Galilee to explore the ancient towns where Jesus spent so much time during his ministry. Yeah. It's really it's really a big lake. It's over there. We read up on the stories in preparation and stopped first at Magdala, the hometown of Mary Magdalene. When purchasing admission, they asked if we'd like a complimentary guide to show us around. She was so kind and really loved teaching the kids about the archaeological findings. Here you have two jars. So, was discovered under the ground. We saw the ruins of the synagogue where the men would gather to study Torah. Why no woman reading the Torah? That's a good question. This tile work was beautiful. No, no, you're not. <laughs> we also saw the mikvah or ritual bath that still fills with water from an underground well. Then we headed down to the waterfront of the Sea of Galilee where the modern church of Magdala was built. Since it was a Sunday, mass was being held, but our guide took us to the side chapels to see the murals about miracles of Jesus. In the downstairs chapel, dedicated to the woman who touched Jesus' robes and was healed, we were invited to say a prayer of healing for anyone we knew in need of restored health. Magdala was so warm towards our kids. I was worried about getting scolded, but they were really gracious guests, and the site was beautifully maintained. Back at the entrance, we enjoyed cooling off with the misting fans and bottles of water from the snack stand. There was also a gift shop with cute Holy Land gifts. Then we drove just a few minutes further to the town of Capernaum, where Peter lived. You could see Peter's mother's house, where Jesus stayed frequently. The church was built on stilts above the house, and you could look down through the glass panel on the floor into Peter's home. 
This site was first preserved by followers of Jesus in 50 AD, so the people commemorating its significance knew Peter while he lived there. So we can be confident that this is really the actual site where Jesus stayed. That's pretty cool. We also walked around some of the other Capernaum ruins, like the synagogue. Parts of the town were built up more over the years, and the details are impressive. Late August is clearly a low volume travel season, or just maybe Christian sites are empty on Sunday mornings. But all the black stones are from Jesus' time, they're all houses that were here in the first century. These white stones go back on top of it. We walked toward the Capernaum waterfront and discussed stories about the Sea of Galilee, like when Jesus called the fishermen to be his disciples, or when there was a storm on the sea and he commanded it, peace. Given the windy day, a storm wasn't that hard to imagine. We weren't in a location where we could safely put our feet into the water, but you know my kids would have tried walking on the water if they could. The sun was almost too much this day, and we opted to skip the Mount of Beatitudes. But the two hour drive back in the mid afternoon was a perfect way for the kids to sit in air conditioning and nap during the hottest parts of the day. Plan your trip with early mornings and late evenings if you'll be going in the summer like we did. That evening we had reservations at Neot Kedumim, a biblical landscape reserve offering guided tours about agricultural life in Israel 3,000 years ago. Ours was a lantern tour at sunset. Worth noting, we were instructed to wear sneakers or hiking shoes, but I did not get the memo, so I managed in my Birkenstocks. Today we have a very special tour. What is the tour called today? Does anybody know? We're going to have lanterns. We got to see olives, pomegranates, date palms, and other produce and we were even invited to pick and taste some of them. Once upon a time, there was grapes and a tree, and the grapes tree rose with us. We saw how wheat was ground in ancient times to make flour. This was not gluten-free. We also saw the ancient olive press. But when I'm harvesting olives, I say masik. Masik, exactly, okay? Masik, exactly, which means that after the farmer does a masik after he harvests the olives, right? He brings them over here to the crushing stone. And why is that? Then we were given lanterns with candles for the adults and battery operated tea lights for the kids. As an activity, we picked hadas or myrtle tree leaves and made sachets. The scent reminded me of a soft eucalyptus. What does it smell like? Something disgusting. The sunset was unbelievable, but it also got so dark we could barely see the farm animals at the tour's end. When visiting Israel during the hot summer months, a sunset tour is the perfect solution, and we loved the one at Neot Kedumim. Masada National Park is one of the must-see sites for any visit to Israel. This ancient fortress was a short drive from our overnight glamping at the Dead Sea, and the landscape looks like something out of a sci-fi film. These shots don't even begin to capture how enormous the cliffs are. There was a parking garage on site, and we headed in to see a film and learn the history of Masada. I hope you're not afraid of heights, because next came the cable car, which takes you up to the ancient palace in only three minutes. 
During cooler seasons, you can choose to walk up the path called the Snake Path, which takes about an hour and a half, but it's closed in these brutally hot months because it would be seriously dangerous to attempt. No. Are you excited? No, I'm not. Are you having fun? No. Do you love heights? No. All right, Snow White. Masada is a place of great pride for the Jewish people, even though the story of this place is a tragic one. First, it was built as King Herod's winter palace around 34 BC, with outer rooms for all of his officers and advisors. Some of the rooms have been renovated, with original stone beneath the black line and restoration work above the line. You can also see how the rooms were plastered and examples of paint styles at the time. These are glimpses of what was a regal and ornate palace. In front, there are three tiers of porches or balconies looking out over the vast landscape. Herod was a famously paranoid ruler and being able to see far must have helped him sleep more easily on those restless nights. Some of the original tile mosaic floors are still in place and the area I found most impressive were his bathhouses with steam rooms and pools where Herod loved to host guests for a spa day. They can pipe hot air. Sure. Okay. And warm up the room. Well, so even when it was winter, if they wanted to take a hot bath, take a hot steam, relax in the really and, and be warm in the bathhouse, this heated the floors from underneath. They had heated floors floor. and heated walls. You can't be show me what you would swim like. <laughs> that's how you would swim in that pool? Should we go down there? No. I think that's where they would light the tiles to heat the floors. Pretty cool. The second part of Masada's history was recorded by the historian Josephus, about 75 years after Herod's death, when a Jewish resistance was fighting against Roman rule, a group of nearly a thousand rebels hid out here for three years until the Romans laid siege and over some time built a ramp to breach the walls. The day before the attack, the Jewish resistance decided to die bravely and in a state of freedom by their own choice, rather than be taken by the Romans. To be honest, it's a hard story to figure out how to appropriately tell children, but it is a place of pride for the Jewish people, as the heroic story of Masada and its dramatic end symbolize the determination of the Jewish people to be free. In this heat, you just spend all your money on water bottles. And then we got these cute water bottles. <laughs> You're covered in water. <laughs> We're all red and sweaty now. That was hot. What did you think? It was good? And we're back in Nevzedek. Nevzedek is such a cute little neighborhood. It feels like almost uh, some of the European side streets that we walked around in Barcelona and uh, similar places. And uh, has more like a villagey vibe as opposed to the big city in the main heart of Tel Aviv. This is one of the most trendy, most popular, most expensive neighborhoods, but you can find great treats, great restaurants, and some really great shopping. And we found a great Airbnb. My kids are obsessed because there are kitties everywhere. We just passed six or seven just on the walk from getting gelato back to our Airbnb. And Nora keeps announcing to them all that they need to come to her kitty party that she's gonna hold tomorrow. <laughs>
calves are so sore after walking the hills of Jerusalem yesterday. But today, we're gonna take an easy day and enjoy the Tel Aviv beach. Our Airbnb in the village of Nevzedek gave us a glimpse of this European village vibe at night and a beachy town feel during the day. But it was also just a few blocks from the heart of Tel Aviv, which felt much like we were back home in New York City. The kids see a cool park and they ask to stop and you say yes. And when you travel with kids, that's maybe the most important thing you can build in. When we were in Spain and in France, we talked about making alternate plans and being flexible and having extra things to add into your day if something falls through. Um, we found that to be the case here. Um, the with some, well, yes and no, because sometimes you need an alternate food option or something that's a little bit closer. Um, maybe the place you looked at six months ago has since closed. Especially specialty places, like the places that do gluten-free, um, they have a higher turnover rate. Yes, the opposite is true. Don't just have extra options, be willing to make cuts to your day if needed. So we had plans yesterday for dinner and said, mm, it's not gonna happen. So we just called it a night and went to Anita and had ice cream for dinner. And that's okay. With kids, you have to cut back sometimes, but it's, it's good to have a full schedule that you can then trim back on. As much as the tourist sites were fairly empty in late August, the locals love the beach, and it's one of their favorite activities for managing the heat. So the chair and umbrella rentals were pretty booked up, but we found a spot in the sand and made ourselves comfortable. Castle with me? Who are you? I can't even see you. Don't hit the big blue fish is over there. The big blue fish? Yeah, the big blue fish. And Jonah. Jonah. Got <laughs> swallowed by the fish. Yep. That happened right, right over there. there. Just when you think your kids haven't been listening, their sandcastle is part temple and part palace with a tunnel for water to get into the city walls. I love it. Bye, beach! Tel Aviv is a fantastic destination for culture and near the Israeli Opera House and the Tel Aviv Museum of Art is Sorona, a park and neighborhood dating back to the late 1800s with historic buildings and a well-curated assortment of shops and eateries including Anita Gelato, which we keep talking about since they have such great gluten-free and vegan flavors. This location had some fantastic outdoor seating. Coconut ice cream, coconut ice cream, yum, yummy, yummy, yum. We also explored Serona Market, a trendy covered food market. We could have spent so much time here, but my kids always find the closest playground, which was right outside the market. It was a perfect area to explore and enjoy. So we are driving all over Israel. Today is actually our last day here, and we are driving from Tel Aviv to Nazareth. Nazareth Village is a recreation of what it was like to live in Nazareth where Jesus grew up 2,000 years ago. If you arrive at the YMCA building and are a bit confused, don't be. You're in the right place. A tour guide takes you around the different dwellings, and interpreters explain what life was like as a farmer, carpenter, potter, and more. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> After a full week of sightseeing, my kids were a bit fatigued, but they perked right up at the overwhelming kindness of the staff who knew exactly how to get the kids involved. This was one of their favorite experiences in our time in Israel. I don't like this one.
All the wool is brought here to Anna, and of course, the wool is usually sheared after a wind ice by dry. Okay, these are months. The replica synagogue gave you a clear picture of the places where Jesus taught during his ministry. It was a remarkable place. Make sure you pre-book your tour because the dates do fill up. My kids made best friends with our tour guide. Many thanks to the team at Nazareth Village. Since we were checked out of our Airbnb, but our flight wasn't until midnight, we needed to fill some time. So we decided to find some entertainment like the locals and went to see a movie. This theater was so festive with these big figures everywhere. My kids were given a choice and decided to see Disney Pixar's Elemental in Hebrew. We were surprised how well we could follow a movie in a foreign language. Afterward, we saw the theater had an ice cream shop, Golda, a sister store of our favorite Anita Gelato that we had repeatedly that week. So we had to get one last dairy-free ice cream. Then it was back to Ben Gurion Airport to bid farewell to Israel. We found a play space in the airport for the kids to burn off the last of their energy, and then we caught the red eye home. This was a remarkable trip that my kids will always remember, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity we had to experience the Holy Land as a family. Where will our next adventure take us? You'll have to subscribe to find out. We'll see you next time, travelers.